Hi there, it's Julie with thisbeautifulfarmlife.com and today we are in my garden and I'm going to give you a little update on what's happening here and what we're planting. So I um, have been gardening for about 25 years here at our farm and um, it's evolved every year and looked a little different and I'm constantly learning and trying new things and so this year we're adjusting our program a little bit. We always um, change things a little bit and we actually built a bunch of new raised beds that we have in that we um, used to just have four. Now we have seven and we replaced the old four that were falling apart. And so our garden looks a little different this year. Two years ago we had a very large garden with tons of produce. And last year due to circumstances with our farm and just busyness, the, the garden just kind of fell apart and we didn't have much going on and it got overrun with weeds and um, just kind of a mess. We didn't get much planted. Uh, this year, it's kind of like starting fresh again and I'm really bad at before pictures. Mostly, I'm just gonna be showing you what we have going right now and if you can't hear me, I'm so sorry. There's a big um, piece of construction equipment uh, running next door at the dairy next to us and so I'm hoping you can hear all this okay over that. So, let's get started. Okay, from here you can see uh, most of my garden. It's somewhere around 50 feet, 55 feet wide, and about 75 feet from this end to that end where my yard is. I used to have a longer garden. It used to go past that fence another 20 or 30 feet. But since that time, we have changed the configuration of our farm, and we now grow a lot of berries out in our fields. Um, at that time, we were just growing cherries and apples, and so now that we grow all the berries out in the field, I don't have any of them here in my garden, but this is still a pretty good sized garden for us. Um, this is, uh, right here in the foreground, you can see these are all potato beds. I think we have, I don't know, eight or ten rows of potatoes here that are about 30 feet long, and that has our winter potatoes, our summer potatoes, we like Yukon and Reds, and then um, our russets for winter, and it's all under drip. Now, we live in south central Washington state. It's a desert on this side of the state. Most people don't know that. They think of this as the evergreen state. But um, in Washington, on this side of the state, we get about six inches of rainfall a year. So without irrigation, we couldn't grow anything. Very, very dry. So we have to irrigate everything that we grow. And I think you can kind of see in the background out there some of our fields and what the countryside looks like. And all of that would be just completely um, desert and sagebrush without the irrigation canals that we have that come bring water from the mountains to us. This is where I have all of my heavy feeders this year. My tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, zucchini. We've fed that area pretty well with the chicken waste from the chicken coop. We uh, do sift it. I'll show you how we do that um, so it's nice and fine before we put it down and some of that has yet to be done. So here is a pile of manure that we have um, saved through the winter. This is only a small portion of what we had. Um, we had about 30 birds this winter so we had a lot of manure in the chicken coop and we just piled it as the spring came and we were ready to clean up the last of the leaves um, in our park, in our yard that we hadn't got done last winter. We mowed all those up really finely and bagged them and then brought them over here earlier this spring and turned them in with our chicken manure and so they've been in here turning for about a month. Uh, this is a tiny portion of the pile that we had. It's pretty broke down, you can see, um, but you know, there's still some, um, you know, chunks in there like this that haven't broke down really well. So it's hard to put that right into your garden. So what we do is we take our wheelbarrow, this is a great grandpa's wheelbarrow that he built and still going strong. And we build this little frame out of two by fours and some hardware cloth and we just staple it on the edges, over the edges, and we put this on here and run it through. And you can see how chunky and rough this is. Um, it's pretty, um, not so hot anymore, but it's not broken fine. It's been in this big chunky pile. So then we screen it how nice it is. So here is what it looks like once we've done it. There's the difference. And now that, I can throw it right into my raised beds and I can put it right into my garden wherever I need it. And um, so what we do, instead of putting it on the whole garden, we just put it right down the rows where we're going to plant. So we don't want to feed all the walkway uh, in the middle and make things grow there that don't need to be growing, um, weeds and whatnot. 
So under our mulch, we just put a layer of that compost um, that's just really rich in nutrients and um, really great for all of our plants. So uh, really easy to do. Build yourself a hardware cloth screen and you can use your chicken manure much easier. And then right there in this area is where we have our seven raised beds. We have our cold frames on those um, raised beds that are movable cold frames and I'm going to show you how we built those so we can take them off now and use them as raised beds. Our wonderful 12-year-old uh, son just built all these raised beds and cold frames for me so we're really excited about that. I'll take you on a little walk around and show you how we do it and talk to you a little bit about our methods and why we are doing it the way we are now. We kind of have our garden um, in four quadrants so the potatoes are in one, the heavy feeders will be back in that area that's where the beans are and then all of our raised beds are over here. That just helps us to have three main areas for rotating crops and then the, the we can rotate also within our raised beds. So we have some compost tumblers. We're not totally sold on them. We've used them for a number of years but they're not very fast. They have their drawbacks. If you had a small yard and you wanted a compost tumbler I recommend it for what we're doing. Um, they're probably not the most efficient. And um, then we have a little potting bench over there. I keep all my tool, hand tools and gloves and everything in that little mailbox so they stay out of the weather all in one place. So that's just kind of a handy way to do that. Um, and here's our new raised beds. Um, this is our faucet area. We have an old pallet that we've stood up here to hang our hose on. There's a few watering tools hanging on there. Uh, again, um, water is really important where we are in the desert. So. We have to have water um, to everything. Um, and so these new raised beds made out of redwood um, decking that we got from my parents when they took their pool out last year. They had a redwood deck that they put in when I was a little girl and it's still going strong. And so we recycled all of this wood um, into um, double high, it's two by six boards, and we did them two high into these raised beds. So they are four by seven feet because that's what fit our space. Um, I don't like to go wider than four because it's really hard to reach more than two feet into the bed. These four beds we made a little different. We added one board in the middle. There's not two there. There's just one on the surface level. That is for the purpose of cold frames. So this is our new cold frames. But these are completely movable. They are just resting on top of my garden bed. So the idea is that we could put some plants right into the ground and then move that off of them. Um, to the next spot. So um, we have two built so far. Um, we have glass over here for two more and frames already built. We just um, didn't get them done in time this spring and now we're kind of done with them for the season. So they're not on these beds but we have enough um, to actually do four of them and that way we can start plants in here in the winter the kale and the, the cold um, weather things like broccoli and cauliflower that are hard to grow here in our heat and um, we can open and close them as we need to. We just I've always just used a stick, it's not fancy, but we just open them in the morning when it gets kind of warm and close them in the evening. Um, and right now we're pretty much done with them. Everything's out. There's just a few zinnias in there that we're going to get out today because um, it's warmed up. It's now the week before Mother's Day and in our area we um, consider it pretty frost free when we get um, to Mother's Day. We've been leaving the cold frames um, open all night for a few nights now and so we started transplanting everything out. So right here in front of this bed we have a few tomatillos. It doesn't take very many tomatillos to make a lot of tomatillo salsa. Um, that bed over there has nothing in it yet so it's still waiting to get later transplants. Um, this bed is full of um, candy sweet, red onions, and then the other side has been seeded into lettuce. This bed has walla walla onions, some green bunching onions, um, a few white globe onions, and lettuce planted over here. I always plant everything on a diamond so you can get them pretty close together. Um, you don't have to do everything in rows and you can get a lot more in. This is um, some peas. We had um, a pretty good crop come up and then chickens got out and totally ate the peas down to the ground almost. Some of them are starting to leaf out again and then we had to reseed a few because I think they pulled them all the way out. So that's been not real successful but um, that's what happens when you have chickens and they don't stay where they belong. This bed has parsley. On this end the kids planted some carrots and radishes a few weeks ago and that is what you see that came up. Just a few radishes. Carrot seed is so tiny um, you just have to keep that surface of the soil wet. So we've reseeded carrots in there yesterday and 
Um, hopefully those will all be coming up. That's our first little planting of carrots. We've got about eight rows in there and we'll plant succession plant those throughout the summer. And then this last bed, we're just getting ready to plant, transplant um, basil into that, sweet Genovese that we use for our pesto. So this whole bed will be full of basil. Okay, so this area here is our potato rows. Um, we've done it this method for quite a few years. I'm not sure it's the only method for sure. There's lots of ways to do it. And we this might be our last year doing it this way because it is a little bit more work um, and we have to do a little bit more digging and stuff. So what we normally do is we mark out our rows. We do um, deep trenches about six to eight inches below the actual level of the soil. And then we plant the potato seeds in those rows. And as they grow up, we scrape, you can see right here one that's been scraped in a little bit. We scrape the dirt in around it and keep doing that until eventually where the high heels of dry dirt are, that would be the low spot and the potato hill would be high. And that gives us a really deep root and lots of potatoes on every plant. We don't have too much trouble with weeds once the plants get up because these will almost touch together and um, they'll just be a narrow walking row down the center and um, it's low and it doesn't get too much sunlight. Uh, a 10 year old son that really wanted to do this this year. So this has been his project. He has planted all of these potatoes and dug all these ditches and he's just done an awesome job. So we're really excited um, to see what his potato patch grows. Okay, so right here, right in front of me where these little drip lines of water are, we have planted um, red and um, orange beets in this row. We love beets roasted. And this one we just, instead of digging down like the potatoes did, we just scraped it up, uh, loosened the soil very, very well, um, put some extra compost on there from the chickens. And um, once those beets get up, we'll probably mulch all the way up to the beets, but we are trying to get them up and through the ground first. And if necessary, we'll actually mulch between the potato rows as well. And then right here, I have a little trellis that's kind of old and broken down that has manuka grapes and interlocking white grape on the right there. And the manukas are really, really good for raisins and the interlocking is just an eating grape. Um, we do have trouble with mildew and I don't like to use chemicals, so it's a little bit tough time sometimes to get good grapes. Okay, I hope that you can hear this okay. There's still a lot of um, noise of equipment behind me. Um, this side of the garden is where we're going to have our melons. We've, we're going to try growing melons on tunnels this year. We've got some honeydew and cantaloupe and watermelon, small watermelons, and see if we can sling them under there. My um, almost 13 year old is really excited to try that. He's the one that built all the raised beds and is quite a gardener. And then we'll have some dry beans probably underneath there. And then on these two long trellises here, which are just cattle panels on T-posts, we have pole beans uh, that we just planted on the low tape next to them where there isn't a, a panel. We'll have more bush um, dry beans. We've never grown dry beans before. We've always just bought them, but we thought we would be challenged to try them this year. I always like to try something new and see if we can get them all shelled. So this is our tomato trellis system. It's kind of evolved over the years. I used to use bamboo like uh, Shep Ogden from Straight Ahead Organic, the Cook's Garden. And they used to have that company and I really loved their method with bamboo, but my bamboo all wore out. It's not easy to find the really tall bamboo. And uh, this method came along and it looked like we could get a lot of tomatoes in a pretty small space. So my husband built these out of old pipe, um, welded them together. So right now we have black twine on trellis wire across the top and down here we have it hooked into the ground with a hop clip and you can see right there that little tool holds a little clip in the very bottom where it's stuck into the ground and you tie a string to that little clip and you just shove it way down in the ground. Foot pedal at the bottom is for pushing it in and it's about a foot into the ground when you push it all the way in and then the clip holds it so it won't come back out like a W and it won't come back up. So we push those into the ground and then we bring them up and we tie them up and then as the tomato plants start up we just wrap them around and around with the twine and they actually hold a ton of weight and make a ton of tomatoes.
You can get most of these things at a hardware store near you, but we live in orchard country. This is the Yakima Valley of Washington State, so that all these supplies are really readily available where we are. If you don't have those, there's many, many ways to do it. Like I said, I used to do it with bamboo teepees. I would put four, te four bamboos in the ground and um, put one, two, three, four, and bring them up to the middle. And right here in the middle, I would tie them together, and then I would do another bamboo teepee and another bamboo teepee right there and then across the top I would stick another bamboo and tie them all together. Um, you can find that method from Shep Ogden at Straight Ahead Organic and it worked really really great for many years and so if you just have a few tomato plants right here we have about 60 um, Roma and paste type tomatoes Amish paste and um, some of the different kinds of Romas and so they go all the way down to there. So that's a lot of tomatoes, but we can a lot of tomatoes for our family. And so that's not too many. I actually have more than that. Um, didn't get them all in the ground. There's a few right there in the middle. Um, these tomatoes on this end are all heirloom type tomatoes, which I'm gonna put on stakes over here in another row. And then there's just a few cherry tomatoes there. And um, those are some zinnias that I got to move and a little bit of peppers on that end So those are going to go into the ground today. We had a little bit of a pepper failure You can see in the end of that there from over watering So I did pick up a few more peppers at the store um, because we mostly lost our bell peppers and we have all of our hot peppers So this row right here is where the peppers are going to go and we just usually um, Because they're not very big we put some little stakes along the edge uh, run some of that black twine at about 18 inches tall and that just kind of holds them in and keeps them from flopping out into the walkway. This row right here where the holes are is going to be um, zucchini. We've, we'll probably put some of our heirloom tomatoes at the end of that row. Um, heirloom tomatoes are going to go in this row where the cages are but those little cages won't hold them. We will have to put them on tea stakes and just tie them to the tea stakes. And then we have another row for uh, some cucumbers and maybe some sunflowers over there. Um, all that is our drip tape. Um, drip tape works really well here where it's so dry and we can get a lot of moisture um, down and not put water where we don't want it. We have horrible weed problems in our area. Um, so if we water anything that's not covered by mulch and even sometimes covered by mulch, it grows weeds. So our plan to keep all the weeds down um, this year is just inches and inches of mulch so you can see how heavy uh, we try to get about four or five inches and hopefully that will hold a lot of moisture for us and keep the weeds out okay so that was our garden and what we're doing right now i know there's a ton of ways to garden um, if you have any questions about what we do we do everything organic um, we try to feed all of our own products for feeding like the chicken manure and compost um, we do have a few trace minerals that we add here and there um, to some of the plants so um, that we use in our farm that are biological, that help produce really rich nutrient dense soil so we have more nutrients in our food. Um, so that's one of the things we do add. If you have any questions, please put those down below in the comments and I'll try to answer them um, about what we're planting or our methods for this or that. I'll try to get to those as um, quick as I can. So I'm glad you joined me today here and I hope that I answered some of your questions that you might have about gardening. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button down below and those thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I appreciate hearing from you. Please click on through to my blog. There's always more information there. It's thisbeautifulfarmlife.com and you can also see my resource library there. I have a subscriber only resource library that always has free things in it that is just for my subscribers. And I send out a newsletter twice a month with my new posts and any new um, special things for my subscriber library um, and some little perks in there. So if you wanna subscribe, click on through to my um, blog and do that and I appreciate that. Thanks again for joining me here in the farmhouse and I'll see you next week. Bye now. Okay, so here's our progress from dirt and nothing, old four old beds that were all broken here yesterday to seven new beds that Luke over there built for us, all these fabulous beds. And now he's building 
movable cold frames that will go on the top. Come and show me how it moves, Luke. So in the early spring, we can start, we're gonna put windows on that, start on there, and then when those plants get big enough, we can move it to the back side and start there for summer plants. Hey, little boys. How's my farmers? Good? What you farming over there? Oh, no, your tractor's in the ditch? In the irrigation ditch? That seems to have happened at our farm once before. I think we had a tractor in the irrigation canal once, didn't we? And then there's the girl from the Alps. She's doing her her alpenhorn. Yeah, she's got it going. Andrew is putting in pipe. Callie's helping him so we can have water to all these beds.